lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to be filming the Springathon scavenger hunt. So this is a spring slash nature inspired scavenger hunt on your bookshelves in honour of Springathon, the readathon that I'm currently co-hosting, which is about reading non-fiction nature writing books. I'm going to do this for both non-fiction and fiction. Today's video is about non-fiction, which is why I'm upstairs in front of my non-fiction shelves and I do also have my non-fiction TBR just over here to the left that you can't see. Um, so we've got 10 prompts to try and find on your shelves and it's just see how many of them you can fulfil and what books you end up talking about. Also please ignore any random background noise, my rabbit is running around like a little lunatic. The first prompt is a book about weather. Now I've not actually looked at my shelves and picked out a bunch of stuff so we shall see what I can find. Um, yes. Okay, I'm going to talk about The Ends of the World by Peter Brannan, and this I guess is about extreme weather conditions, more specifically about mass extinction events. So our Earth has gone through five mass extinction events since its kind of life has first formed that we know of, and this book details what, what was going on on our planet just before the extinction event, what life looked like, and then what caused the mass extinction event. And for a lot of them it is some kind of really extreme weather situation that causes changes in the carbon cycle, or something external like the um, asteroid strike that took out the dinosaurs. So the book, the front cover, covers some, some very dramatic weather features as well, and I think that this is a good candidate. It's also a fantastic book if you like anything to do with prehistory or environmentalism and climate change. Prompt 2 is a book with bees or butterflies on the cover, and I know exactly what I'm picking. Where is it? Who's it by? I know it, but I don't know where it is. There it is. So this is Rainbow Dust by Peter Marin. This is Three Centuries of Delight in British Butterflies. And it talks about the hobby of butterfly collecting that was very, very popular in Britain um, in, I think, the 70s or 80s. Please don't quote me on when. Sorry, my rabbit's down by my feet. And it also talks about the British butterfly in general and sort of the various species that are out there and sort of what is happening to the local habitat. I read this a few years ago now and it really is one of the early nature writing non-fiction books that I read that really, like, prompted me to want to read more in the genre in general so I kind of credit this one and kind of Wilding by Isabella Tree as sort of sparking this new real love and interest in this genre in general so it's definitely very interesting and great for kind of a blend of history, hobby and nature. If my camera battery doesn't die there will be a cameo from Miss Money at the end I promise. Prompt number three is a book about either your home or homes in general. Okay, homes in general. I can't I think of anything is not ideal is it miss bunny thank you for cleaning my slippers that's very good of you you're very sweet um 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 we don't know do we oh no i might not have anything for this one um 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 yeah Okay, so a little bit of a stretch, but I have Sea Shaken Houses by Tom Nancolas. Uh, this is a collection of almost like mini essays, which is a history of rock lighthouses, which are the lighthouses literally built out to sea on big mounds of rock rather than like on the coast themselves. And it is about the various people who have made lighthouses their homes over the years. And it has the word, the word houses in the title, which is very similar to home. I feel like you might be able to get away with it and it would kind of count. So yeah, I'm going to say this one, that that's kind of a bit flimsy, but oh well. Uh, then we have a book about dirt or soil and I don't think I have anything oh no wait maybe I do maybe I do maybe I do okay yes scrap that where is it Martin Okay, so I have one, but I've got a better one. So uh, this is Dinosaurs Without Bones by Anthony J. Martin, and this is all about trace fossils, which are not the specifically fossilised bones themselves, but rather the marks in the dirt or soil, there's my connection, um, which tell us stuff about how dinosaurs lived. So we're talking about things like footprints and sort of um, evidence of scavenging and nests, and you've also got obviously like marks on the bone as well, and evidence of how they lived in particular, rather than just their anatomy directly. So this is my one for dirt and soil. Okay, prompt number five is water on the cover. What do I have with water? Where is water? There's some water. Okay, just at the very top of this cover, you've got Sir the Sea, which is definitely water. I'm good at science, I know that much. And this is On Chapel Sands by Laura Cumming. This is My Mother and Other Missing Persons. Now, I did not actually enjoy this book. I read it for book the BookTube Prize last year. Hello, Bunny. Yes, those are my shelves. 
Thank you. Yes. Anyway, sorry. I read it for um, BookTube last year, uh, the BookTube Prize, and basically it is a sort of family drama about um, this this person's mother who went missing when her mother was like only kind of a couple of years old, and it was kept secret from her for basically her entire life, and she'd also blanked out of her memory. And it's like the mystery of what happened to her, and it's really not a mystery. It's very dull. It's basically just a family feud, and it felt very overworked and over written and is the kind of memoir that I definitely don't enjoy so I, I think I like sped read it on audiobook because I was not bothered and um, I gave it like two stars but it has water so ha that's all we need for that prompt. Prompt number six is a bird on the cover. A bird, a bird, a bird, a bird, a bird, a bird, a bird. Do we have a bird? I must have a book with birds on the cover. I'm going to be good and not just pick a dinosaur which is technically a bird. I'm actually going to find like a proper bird that you will all accept as a bird. I say that, I might just end up picking a dinosaur because I don't know if I actually have any normal birds. Oh, this one's got a bird. Oh, this is one of Andy's. This is not mine because we've combined our books since we moved in to our new house. We've been living together for ages. Um, I said that as if we'd only just moved in, but we haven't. Anyway, this is Who Lost Russia? How the World Entered a New Cold War by Peter Conradi. And uh, let's read you the little spoofy bit. The collapse of the Soviet Union at the end of 1991 appeared to usher in a remarkable new era of peace and cooperation within the West. This, we were told, was the end of history. Now the entire world would embrace enlightenment values and liberal democracy. Reality has proved very different. Russia emerged from the 90s, battered and humiliated. The latter day Weimar, Weimar, Weimar Germany, blah, 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 its former protests ignored as NATO expanded eastward to take on Moscow's former satellites. Vladimir Putin offers a new start when he took in the place of the erratic Boris Yeltsin in the Kremlin, but determined to restore his country's bruised pride, he has wrong-footed the West with his incursions into Georgia, Ukraine, and Syria. Cold War threatens to turn hot once again. Mmm! Andy, oh, the bunny's been jumping around. This is a chaotic video, isn't it? There's a lot of chaotic energy today. Um, so, <laughs> this is a book about Russian history, specifically uh, history from kind of the 90s onwards, um, some more like modern day history, and sort of a, a modern political book. Andy really likes reading stuff about Russia. I cannot remember if he said this is good or not, but it has a little birdie. Look at him, look at him. Look, he, he's, he's so cute. There's my bird. So that counts, I did not pick a dinosaur book. Did that go there? Yeah, we're probably gonna have to fix the shelves after this. We now have a book with a footprint on the cover. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to do this. Does that have a footprint? No, there are no footprints on that one. Um, hum, hum. Oh, I wanted to find one for everything. Um, 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 let's try and think what might have a footprint on it. Oh, did that? Can I use that again? Is that a footprint? I can't tell. I can't use that one again, can I? That's cheating, surely, using the same book twice. Footprint. Where might have a footprint? Has that got any footprints? No, no footprints on that one. Well, that's some of these football ones. Do they have a football boot on them? That was Pep Guardiola. No, it does not. What? Uh, this one? No. I might have to concede. It's got a foot. Doesn't count as a footprint necessarily, but it has a foot. So I'm going to give myself like half a point. This is Sensible Footwear A Girl's Guide by Kate Charlesworth. And this is a graphic memoir um, about Kate's experiences coming out as a lesbian and also a bit of a history of the LGBTQ community and movement, I think mainly in the UK. Um, so yes, really good. And one of the few non-fiction graphic uh, novels that I've read, which I'd love to read more. Did that go there? I don't think it did, but let's just pop it there for now. We will fix everything later. Um, right, the next one is a travel or migration book. So, hello, Bunny. Aha! We have Erebus uh, by Michael Palin. This is the story of a ship and it's specifically about two journeys that Erebus went on. One was to the furthest point south that had ever been done at that point and then one was up to try and find the Northwest Passage which unfortunately was where the ship disappeared and we found it back in 2014. It went missing in the 1800s. Um, the story of Erebus is genuinely very interesting but this particular book I didn't enjoy because it very much felt like Michael Palin's story of Erebus. He was very um, kind of 
uh, invasive as an author and the authorial voice was incredibly strong so a lot of it was felt a little bit dull to me but it's an interesting if you like history in general oh god my rabbit's throat shear <laughs> you're gonna bludgeon yourself don't shove that it's gonna fall on your head and then that'll hurt hi can mummy go back to filming is this allowed this is this is crazy this is the weirdest tag video i think i've ever filmed so yeah erebus a ship traveling it's fine uh the next prompt is an author's name that has something to do with nature so what do we have what do i have um okay yeah we'll go with this one this one's another one of Andy's books and this is uh, Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs and Steel. Diamonds are a part of nature, they are crushed carbon, they're very cool so I feel like that counts. And this is a short history of everybody for the last uh, 13,000 years and this is kind of very iconic in sort of really big macro history. I think this is almost like what Sapiens was trying to do but like it's written even before Sapiens came out um, and it looks at specifically like how various advancements have affected human evolution and kind of human civilization in general. I've not actually read it, it's it's well known, it's a real like classic in non-fiction. I bought this for Andy for his birthday I think like five, four or five years ago now. Um, I'm pretty sure he has read it but I don't know um, what he thinks to it but it's one that like one day I think I'll eventually get around to reading because it is so like iconic but there are probably decent amounts of it in here that I now have read about in other forms so it's not high priority. And then the final one is uh, a book with something prehistoric on the cover. And for that one we had so 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 many options but actually I'm just gonna pick Kindred which is Neanderthal Life, Love, Death and Art by Rebecca Rag Sykes. I finished this fairly recently and it's a look at Neanderthals as a species of human and what we can know about them based on the fossil record, both their interactions with Homo sapiens but also just sort of their tool making, their art, their kind of death practices, their diets, everything about them that we possibly could. It gets a little bogged down and heavy with the details in the middle but it is a fantastic book and is really good at addressing some of the misconceptions that we have about Neanderthals as being just grunting cavemen which is completely inaccurate and they were a far more advanced and civilised race than we really give them credit for. Um, so yeah, really really interesting, definitely would recommend and Rebecca Ragsites has some fantastic interviews out with a bunch of different podcasts including the wonderful You're Dead to Me where they have a whole episode on Neanderthals so do check that out if you don't have the time to commit to a full book. Okay, so that is it for the non-fiction version of the scavenger uh, springathon scavenger hunt this i'm just going to tag everybody i can think of so like rosie you should do this one uh kate you should do this one obviously all the co-hosts should do this one um basically if you've put out a tbr that i've watched recently you should totally do this okay i want to see everybody's uh bookshelves and i want to see these scavenger hunts happening so look out for the other hosts who should be putting out that scavenger hunt soon ish and uh i hope you enjoyed this my fiction one will be coming really soon have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye now I said I'd do a little cameo of Miss Bunny. So here she is. <laughs> you have fun running around whilst Mummy was filming? Yeah, hi. That's my camera. I know. <laughs> That's the lens, darling. I think you've made it a bit fuzzy now. How are you? Are you good? Those are my legs. I know, you've definitely made the lens dirty. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I love you too. Right, say goodbye, everybody. We say have a wonderful reading week, don't we? Bye.